Uh, and it's my great pleasure to uh, welcome and give the floor to Sergeant Domanovic, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Montenegro. Good morning to everyone. Uh, before I address this panel's topic, I would like to express my appreciation once again to the Economist, for, uh, the Economist events team for organizing this uh, great uh, conference here in Podgorica. As Deputy Prime Minister Pajin said, it is a very timely occasion to put Montenegro in the focus of the broader attention. And it is also a good time to address some pressing issues that concern Europe on a very fundamental level. The EU is going through an existential crisis, if I may say. But that in itself, as painful as it may look at present, can actually serve to sharpen the focus of the member states regarding the sh shape and the future of the Union. Providing we keep up at the same pace, Montenegro expects to become a member of the EU in the next three to five years. Montenegro has been the leader in the region in the EU integration process, with 26 out of 35 negotiating chapters opened and two chapters provisionally closed. I am particularly pleased that one of our key foreign policy goals to ensure security for the citizens and the state of Montenegro through NATO membership is within our reach, especially after the recent adoption of the law on the confirmation of the North Atlantic Treaty by the Montenegrin Parliament on April 28th last Friday. We are only waiting for the ratification process to be finalized in the, in the beginning of this month in, in Spain and uh, uh, Netherlands to, to send the uh, instrument of ratification to Washington and then uh, us, after that, the process will be finally finished. We are going to become the member of, of uh, North Atlantic Alliance. As for the EU, Montenegro's, Montenegro's position on the future of the Union is clear. We are very much in favor of a strong Europe, a Europe which will include all the countries of the Western Balkans, which will be able to harness the region's economic and human potential to the benefit of all, and which will continue to grow through more open and dynamic economic partnerships with other countries and regions of the world. It is clear that certain segments of the population of some EU member states are struggling with the idea of stronger Europe or united Europe and are actually open defying such a prospect. The most recent case and the most palpable expression of such an opposition is of course the case of Brexit but we can also see in the form of new nationalism in France, and not only in France. Both are defined by the issues of Euroscepticism, a drive to reclaim national sovereignty, uh, tough immigration stance, and economic protectionism. The result of the upcoming elections in France, the presidential elections of made of uh, now a second round, uh, after the first round, uh, was over on the May 7th, and the legislative elections to elect the member of the National Assembly on uh, June 11th and 18th, along with the upcoming UK parliamentary elections scheduled for June 8th, will no doubt have influence on the vote, uh, for example, in Germany, for Germany's next chancellor in September 24th. Regardless of the September elections result in Germany, I'm sure that these a uh, very important country will continue to play a strong, dedicated role in the shaping of the European Union. Germany is also to be credited with a very constructive initiative towards the Western Balkans, which was launched in Berlin in 2014, and which is focused on economic integration of the Western Balkans countries in the EU, primarily through joint projects in the sector of energy and transport infrastructure. Our former foreign minister is here who was working a lot on this, on this process. The process has additionally mobilized Austria, France, and Italy to be also involved in the more concrete economic exchange 
with the countries of the region. And I look forward to the upcoming summit of the Berlin process in Trieste on the July 12th, where we shall discuss the progress made so far and the prospects for the realization of planned key infrastructure projects, as well as cooperation of SMEs and the Chambers of Commerce. I strongly believe that the enlargement has been the most successful of EU foreign policies, and also that the EU connectivity agenda and the Berlin process are the key to the economic growth and more substantial, su substantial cooperation and exchange between the business and between the people of the Western Balkans, Bel Western Balkans country and the EU. I also believe that reforms and competitiveness within European countries will be inevitable in the upcoming period, and that, and that they will shape the direction of the EU towards a more economy and business-focused agenda, open to trade and business cooperation with key partner countries and regions, especially the China-initiated Belt and Road Initiative and less towards the narrow political and protectionist agendas of today. When it, come to, when it comes to Turkey, Montenegro, of course, follows with great interest the recent developments, believing that democracy and respect for human rights must prevail. At the same time, Turkey is a very valuable economic partner of ours. I would say that uh, uh, I mentioned elections in France, but uh, uh, we, we are also aware of the, of the result of, the, of these elections. Uh, I don't want to say if, if French pro-European uh, movement or pro-European uh, view doesn't prevail, then Europe will be in a big jeopardy. Uh, it, is, it is why we are, we are waiting so uh, with, with a great interest on the next, on the next Sunday in these, in these very, very important European countries. And we believe that uh, pro-European agenda will, will uh, demonstrate its liveliness, its strength, its uh, vigorness, as it was in, in Dutch elections when the pro-European coalition of parties uh, actually uh, won in the pretty, pretty convincingly. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for, to, for taking part in this conference today, and I wish you, to all of you, a very pleasant stay in our country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Minister, for those wide-ranging comments, and please come and take a seat. And